If this was flooded, what three bags would you, would you rescue? What's up y'all? It's Alani Zola for Complex. 2020 brought in a world of challenge, but also ushered in some monumental change. When Brandon Blackwood dropped his iconic and systemic racism bag, that bag and all of his other designs went viral. So we're here at his Brooklyn studio to see what he has planned for the next collection. So we are in your studio space in Brooklyn right now, and I know when we were setting up this interview, you guys were still perfecting it. It definitely shows, it's beautiful in here. Can you talk a little bit about like your first four bags? I know that they were mm -hmm. named after, you know, your friends and your brother. Yeah. How did they influence your first, your first bags? My first bags were definitely just like, very like beginner to me, I would say. Like mm -hmm. now I probably wouldn't make them. Mm -hmm. One, I still have the backpack mm -hmm. from that collection, but all of them, especially that first collection, was about just like, I was super young, taking the train, seeing all my friends like, out and about with like, what they were carrying. And I was like, okay, everyone needs like, a, a slightly cuter bag, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, it was super like, unisex, very like, everything was black. And I wanted it to, everyone it was rep like, named after, I wanted to like, represent them, mm -hmm. you know? My little brother, I named like, this wallet that has like, this, uh, organizer inside. It's still he's, on the website. Yeah, it's still on the website. That's just the wallet. He's super organized, like super just straightforward. Like everything I make, especially if it's named after someone, has to like make sense. So yeah. A lot of companies in the past two years, especially in 2020, mm -hmm. haven't seen this exponential growth. How are you guys dealing with all this growth so quickly during a pandemic? It was kind of crazy. I was actually talking to someone about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. How for me the pandemic was kind of like the kind of changing point for the brand, which I'm really fortunate about. I think just not being it has been very tricky just because we grew so quickly. And because we grew so quickly, you know, we've had to scale up. We grew by, I think, 50,000%, wow. which is not normal. So navigating that like really intense growth has been really crazy. We've had some hiccups with nothing we can handle. And it's great to see how cool the customers like are about everything, how they're really just like riding with us through this whole wave. And I mean, our projection now, it's only gonna get bigger, so I'm excited. I know it's easy to just go on Instagram and be like, what's this going on? Or like, when is this restocking? Mm -hmm. And they think that you just have it. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, I love it because it shows that like, you know, the customer is there, they really want the product, mm -hmm. they really, you know, I'm making something that a lot of people do want, which is awesome. But yeah, a lot of people think things that get, get made in like three days. It's like anything you see us launch, it probably took like two and a half, three months. And that's just of waiting, you know, <laughs> for the production. Like it's a lot of playing ahead. Like right now, we're planning into like fall next year already. And like we are, we're kind of laying something up for like uh, spring 23. Wow. So it's like, yeah, people don't realize it's like all planned. I think another thing that people might not see is everything that goes behind your campaigns. I know that you've been designing, you know, way before 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like these past two years is when Brandon Blackwood as a brand like exploded. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw Kim K with the ESR toad. Mm -hmm. I saw Doja Cat with the play bag, calling mm -hmm. it her favorite bag. You know, yeah. Normani with the bamboo bag that mm -hmm. I need restocked immediately. I know, <laughs> everyone's on me about that. <laughs> it was definitely Lala for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, call me a sheep, whatever. Mm -hmm. But when I saw her with that <laughs> tiny little Little Kendrick told mm -hmm. I went and bought two. That was one of the best selling ones. She like DM'd me the other day, just like checking on me. I'm like, oh, you're so nice. No like, one has ever said a bad thing about Lala. No, she is like so cool. For me, you know, seeing a young business, especially in the age of online, everyone is mm -hmm. buying things online. How important was it to see your bags like next to legacy brands? Like mm -hmm. Coach is making a comeback right now, mm -hmm. you know, Michael Kors or you know, it's Kate Spade, all of those bags that are mm -hmm. normally in department stores, how did it, how important was it for you, especially as a black designer, yeah. to see your bags there? When I first started the brand, all I wanted in life was to be in the Nordstrom, a Saks, a Bloomingdale. It's like, I was told no by like every, mm -hmm. almost every store that I'm in now, mm -hmm. you know? And that's been something in itself, but literally, once I kind of gave up on that and just focused on building my audience and really focusing just like, direct to consumer, right. 
it blew up and I think that's when the stores were like, oh, mm -hmm. they have something that we don't have or our brands don't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. I think the legacy brands are, at this point, they've all been around for a very long time and like people just like, you know, you have that automatic, okay, they make this, they're good for this, whatever. But with me, we've tapped into a market that like we, we really use social media. Right. We connect with our audience, we're transparent. Like I ask my, I show like my swatches and be like. Which is so, like people yeah. are usually so secretive to so It's like, to... yeah, I show swatches. I'm like, what colors do you want? Like all my suede trunks down there. Yeah. And then these guys here, like the customers pick those right. colors. And it's like us doing things like that and no big brand is ever gonna try something like that. That's the little things like that set us apart and have made us like get to where we are. And now I think like the department stores like kind of don't know what to do and they're like, this is hot, we need this. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to market it, but it's, it works. And I think that's like the cool part that we got into these stores being our most like authentic and true self. Right, yeah, I read in uh, an interview you did with Forbes in 2020, mm -hmm how you said you had struggled to get your, your bags in there because the designs were deemed as too black. No one ever said directly to me like too black, mm. obviously, but like, <laughs> it was like, you know, they say things like, it's very niche. There's and nuances. I'm like, it's a, it's a square trunk bag. How's that neat? You know what I mean? Like, like, but they would just like say, like use terms like that. Cause they saw my audience, they saw who was buying it. My brand today is still mm -hmm. very much like predominantly like black and POC right. customers. And at that point, back then, they just were like, okay, well, you know, we can live without it. And now, you know, it's completely it's cool. flipped. You have Aurora with the 15% pledge, things like that. So I think now they're trying to make up for lost time, but they're also not, they're not necessarily doing it out of charity, you know what I mean? Because right. they still need to make money as well. But they're also like now realizing that these black brands can sell, they have worth, and they're pretty cool. Yeah, so. black dollar is at the forefront. It's and always been at yeah, the forefront. Yeah, it's like, but now it's one like, thing we're gonna do is always look fly. You know what I mean? We're gonna spend our coin to look cute, the go out. Oh, exactly. Looking at this wall, I'm seeing some epic designs, but you know, this is a basement level studio. Mm -hmm. We saw the floods of New York City yeah. a few weeks ago. If this was flooded, what three bags would you, would you rescue? Like you have 50 seconds, to okay. pick the bag that will last a lifetime in the flood. <laughs> the Bowen, which is this guy with the bamboo twist lock, okay. I'd probably take the green one. Mm -hmm. The suede trunks, just because the other ones could probably survive some water. <laughs> and then probably one of the medium quays up there to throw some other stuff just in. Stuff, just just a, stuff as much stuff as I it. can. Okay, yeah. I see where your mind is. Yeah. So I think now I would just love to see your process when you're coming up with these designs. Yeah, for sure. We can just go into a creative meeting real quick mm -hmm. and see how that goes. Yeah, we're like always like working on something here, so. So what are you guys working on now, like on a typical meeting? So. I guess I could run through like everyone's kind of yeah. role. Yeah. So Ramona's PR. We have Maya and Nima. We have Alex, Alex and Imani. So this fall we're basically doing a, we're gonna do like a show. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like the first time we've ever done that. We're gonna be doing not only bags, but like some other things. So we're getting it all kind of ready right now. I actually had something. Mm -hmm. Because yesterday somebody asked if they could throw their bag in the washer. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I don't know if it's too late for the fall, but I think like moving forward, since we have things like Sherling and Fox and ostrich feathers, it would be good to do a care tag inside of the bags. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to the website. For sure. Like these guys, it's pretty simple. Like, yeah, yeah remember, that's like, true. For the little mini collection in October, I'm going to do new boxes. Someone should actually mm -hmm. write that down. We're going to yeah, do like special good. boxes. I always do a birthday collection, mm -hmm. it's like a couple of things. So this time I'm gonna like change the whole packaging just for that. Mm -hmm. Right when the fall uh, show drops, mm -hmm. I want like right when the video's over, I want it right on the side, yeah. like yeah, ready to go. Like I want like even a day in between yeah. so I need to figure that out. Okay. And then I'm going to this atelier that's in the city right now, mm -hmm. working on outerwear. And that is gonna be major, but I literally was there yesterday. It's just like a lot of meetings. We're doing a lot of pattern making, like sourcing. They're dyeing everything now. It's gonna be maybe, I think this fall, maybe like the most important thing I've ever done. Wow. Like, I, like all of us are like, it's probably like the craziest thing. This right here is 
I will always, I'm so drawn to the Kendrick bag. It's so crazy. This bag was, I made it like maybe three years ago mm -hmm. now. And it was a slow start. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think people were really into it. But then this slowly became, and we really left. We're like, what? Like, yeah. people don't get it. <laughs> like, no one wanted it. And then all of a sudden, this was when I was in the studio oh, video. When that free fall with yeah. the map out of that plane. I screamed when I saw that. <laughs> you know how I found, how I saw it? So we got like a clip to like, you know, see ahead of time, but it was like really rough, not like as like, you know, done. Then I was going to bed and I knew like the next day the video was coming out, but it was like obviously super hush hush. The Shade Room posted it. And then I saw it and I kept being tagged by people. I was like, what the hell is going on? And then it was that clip and I was like, From I didn't go to sleep that like, night. I replayed that, was a that thing. It wasn't just like, you know how some music videos. It's like they just like, oh, do a just quick little, little thing, little quick. No, she's no. like, we are free falling out of this plane. Sweetie so jumped out of that. <laughs> I was freaking out. I, I literally like DM'd her and was like, yo, this is like major. It was like so iconic. I know that the ESR tote has been discontinued, but do you ever see in the future using your bags or your collection to foster new types of social change? That bag proved, I think, a lot to the industry. It proved a lot to me and my team. It, it said so much. I didn't know, or none of us knew that it would get as big. So that message behind it, even though the ESR code is discontinued, we're always going to carry that through. Like, even after it was discontinued, we've like, donated it and like, worked with different things. Imani has always come with ideas for like things to do for the community. But I think we're, one, just being a black designer, especially being a black designer, like, based in Brooklyn, right. you can't not be for the people, right. you know? So I think that's always gonna be something to focus on. I'm gonna work on getting my money up so I can purchase everything <laughs> in this collection. You, you have all the info now. Yep. We're gonna need to get NDA. Yeah, NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, thank you for like, gonna hang out with us Thank today. you for inviting me to your meeting.